Hello, everyone. I'm just letting everybody into the Zoom meeting. And if everybody could uh, just remain on mute, um, that would be great. And we're so excited that you're here. Thank you all so much for joining us tonight. Um, for anybody not familiar, this is our University of Arkansas School of Art Spotlight Day, um, where we're focusing on our amazing programs in art history and graphic design. We're really happy that you're here with us and that you've made time to be here. We will be recording this. Um, so you will also receive a recording after the event tonight. Um, also, if you have any questions, um, we are gonna have a Q&A time around 7.10, 7.15 this evening. So feel free to hold on to those questions. Um, you can also po post them in the chat if you would rather write them out too. Looks like we got another person there. And my name is Donna Jones. I'm our Director of Recruitment and Outreach here at the School of Art. And we're, like I said, we're so glad that you're here. I know I've met several of you um, out at different fairs and have corresponded via email. So good to see your names here as well. And so without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and get us started with the presentation. And hold on just a second. Okay. Can everyone see that okay? Okay, great. All right, let me just move this. There we go. So again, welcome to the School of Art. Uh, we are so excited that you're here. And if you have questions, feel free to pop them in the chat or we can talk about those in a little bit as well. So a little bit about us. Um, sometimes people think the School of Art is a totally separate Thing. We are very much a part of the College of Arts and Sciences and the University of Arkansas. The reason that's important to know is that all of our students have the opportunity to not only focus on their arts education, but to also do a double major, potentially a dual degree, and even participate in different minors, pre-professional coursework. So you are going to get that rigorous uh, interest set and skill set in your art area, but then you'll also be able to try different things in the humanities, in math and science and social science, um, even trying out different seminars and different topics courses. So you're building on that portfolio and your writing and your research, but you're also considering how that affects your community. Um, so we are not siphoned off from the rest of the campus or the community itself. So we have students going into the field, at different museums, in different design firms, in different study abroad programs, and also here in Northwest Arkansas, um, seeing how things like design and research can make a significant change. So like I mentioned, options for study abroad are fairly endless. If it's a safe country to go to and you uh, have a plan in place and know that you wanna go study somewhere, we have an excellent study abroad office on campus. And you can also participate in internships, workshops, residencies, and also find a lot of great different career paths through our career center, our amazing faculty, our different peer mentors. So there's always different opportunities to get involved in. So you're gonna have that rigorous arts education, um, but you're also gonna have that opportunity to pursue that liberal arts curriculum. So by the time you leave the program, skill sets like critical thinking, speaking well about your work or your writing or your research, writing well, um, and being able to work with a, and collaborate with a group of people um, that may have very different perspectives than you is a really huge skill set. Sometimes people call those soft skills, but we really like to think of them as power skills because those things will elevate your resume, your cover letter, your opportunities later on in life too. And last but not least, we certainly have a lot of opportunities with the Honors College, not only funding, but different ways to be involved on campus, um, different ways to get into rigorous research as well. And there's a lot of interdisciplinary opportunities. So a little about our facilities and faculty. So we do have over 75 faculty. Um, we started at 36 uh, when I started here almost four years ago. So that is a significant increase. Um, we are right at about 500 students total for enrollment this fall. That ratio between faculty and staff to students is quite small. The reason that's important for students and for families is that you will not just be another person in a classroom. Even if you wanted to fade away, you won't be able to. Um, so you're gonna know your faculty, you're gonna know the other students in your classes. And that means that you're gonna be people that 
uh, our faculty can go to to say, hey, I heard about this opportunity. I know we talked about this in class last week. Would you be interested in applying? Or I would love to write you a recommendation letter um, and just help you get tapped in and involved and to make sure you have that support network moving forward through the program. We are also moving into the Wingate Studio and Design Center um, with a completion date of around this time next fall. And then we'll fully have all of our studio art and graphic design classes starting in spring 2023 at that facility. And I'll talk about that here in a little bit. Very exciting for art history and art education as well. We'll be renovating the wonderful mid-century modern building that I find myself in at this very moment, uh, our Fine Arts Center on campus. It's a beautiful three-story space, but we do have expansion within our programs and we need new spaces, we need new classrooms. So we're very excited about the possibilities and the future um, for this space as well. We also have the Fine Arts Library has excellent research materials and librarians and staff resources for students as you continue to write and research in your own practice. And as artists, designers, historians, educators, we wanna see work too, right? So we have galleries in our Fine Arts Center, in our Sculpture Center, Ceramic Center, and also Sugar Gallery, which is a totally student-led gallery that is on the downtown square here in Fayetteville. So where are we, right? You've kind of heard me talk about things. So historically, the only building that the Fine Arts uh, was a part of was the Fine Arts Center. You'll see it marked here with this red A. If you look around us, a major reason that we'll never fully leave this building is its location on campus. We're right next to the Arkansas Union. We are right next to Union Station, which is the main bus hub that can get you all around Northwest Arkansas and Fayetteville. And then over on your right, probably any piece of literature you will ever get from the University of Arkansas will have Old Main on it. It's our iconic building with two towers. Um, so we're very much in the heartbeat of the main campus. However, with growth comes need for space, right? So these are all the buildings that we currently occupy at this very moment. Um, so as you can see, we really need to increase space for our students to make sure that they have access to facilities, um, access to proper lighting, access to great research facilities and things like that too. So down at the bottom here, you'll see where it says sculpture studios and the foundation studios. In the gray area surrounding those spaces, that is where the Wingate Studio and Design Center is currently being built. Um, and I'll talk about that here in the next slide. And then on the Fine Arts Center, this is what will be renovated in the next few years to accommodate for growth in art history and art education. So if you can take all of these and then combine it into the Wingate Center and the Fine Arts Center, those are gonna be our two main areas. The Wingate Studio and Design Center is 154,000 square feet. It's four stories. This will house all of our studio art areas and also graphic design. I'll show you a few images here too. There will be a lot of outdoor space. You can see there's a lot of natural light coming in through the windows. Um, and it's very industrial and modern. You know, the reason being that we really want the students work, not only the physical objects, oh, sorry, that keeps skipping, um, but also their actual work to shine. So this on the first floor, you'll see that there's a lot of open workshop spaces that will be built for graphic design. So they'll be able to interact with the community members there to be working on different design projects. So this is a space that is really designed with students and faculty and research in mind. So we are very excited about that. This is an, an interior shot. So you'll see there's a lot of tall ceilings, huge white walls, really primed and ready for student artwork. Okay, so another big update is our scholarship process. Um, this year, we were able to award over $500,000 to our undergraduate transfer and new incoming and current students here in the School of Art alone. So that was just for art design, art education, and art history majors and minors. Next year, it will be very similar. So our students that are pursuing scholarship opportunities definitely want to encourage them to apply for any School of Art scholarships by February 1st if they think they will be joining us in the fall 2022 semester. That is all done on our website there. You'll see uarcart.slideroom.com. That application is currently open. It will close February 1st. 
So if you have any questions about the application materials, please feel free to reach out to me and I will make sure that you have my email in the chat. I know you probably have it from reminders about the event and things, um, but it's always good to have it handy. Another thing that sometimes students miss out on is the overall University of Arkansas scholarship deadline. That is November 15th. The priority scholarship deadline is November 15th for any student thinking they'll join us in fall of 2022. So if you have not yet applied to the U of A, I would encourage you to go ahead and do that. The priority application deadline is November 1st. That then gives you two weeks to submit any materials you might need for scholarship consideration. And then is when you apply for School of Art scholarships after that point. So we really want students to think about all the different funding opportunities they can have, um, not only for the academic year, but also as I'll show you later for summer study abroad, for travel, for things like that too. Okay, so a little bit about the first year in the program. So for any students considering um, say graphic design, studio art or art education, all of those students will take two courses in their first year. Those are called Foundations One, Arts 1919, and then Foundations Two. My amazing colleague, Jody Thompson, who is a Foundations faculty member, has uh, pre-recorded a video for us. So we'll watch that here in just a little, a little bit. And that will really go through those uh, classes a bit more. Students thinking about those programs will then apply at either the end of their first year, usually by early March, or April um, to go into those BFA programs the following year. For studio art, usually it's the next semester, so fall of their sophomore year. For students that are pursuing art history as a major, they will begin in the survey courses, so survey of art one and two, and then move on to upper level coursework and different topics as well. So that's sort of the flow of the program. So here are just a quick few images of some of the areas that we do offer. So the great thing about our program too is you're not just siloed in your own area. You have the opportunity to take art history courses, to take different painting courses, photography courses, printmaking courses. So while you are going to have your focus of course in your degree plan, just like adding on a minor, just like adding on a double major with other things across the university, you also get to experience all the wonderful things that the School of Art provides. Yes, and I'm excited to hear Professor Allie Place and Dr. Lynn Jacobs talk a little bit more about art history and graphic design here in a little bit too. And so you'll see at the top there, we just had a few of the um, Instagram handles and also the websites um, for some of our areas too. So if you're ever interested in looking through those, feel free to check those out. Um, oh, I like that the blue screen kind of changed my facial tone here too. Um, we have a very robust visiting artist lecture series. So this is also along the lines of career opportunities, networking opportunities for our students. Um, you'll see our six amazing artists listed here. Those are open to the public. They are on Zoom this fall. You all are welcome to join us for any of those. And for those that are recorded, we will have on our School of Art YouTube channel too. So that's a really great resource for students to hear from artists all over the world, doing all sorts of research, practicing in all different areas, and then also them getting to ask questions directly to these huge mega folks. Um, and that's a one small thing. There are so many communi um, different communications and collaborations with different arts organizations in this area that students don't have to worry about reaching out to someone. If they do, they know somebody here in the School of Art can help connect them um, or help them get to that resource and make, make time to talk to that person about their career path or see if there are any internship opportunities or different volunteer opportunities um, to see if they can find their niche within that area. And we do have some se uh, several research centers that are in play right now too. One is the Center for the Study of Childhood Art with Dr. Christopher Schulte in Art Education. And another is the Center for Photographers of Color um, run by professor and artist Aaron Turner. These are other opportunities for our students to be involved, not only on the School of Art campus, but thinking more broadly about the, the art world in general and how they can find different professional practices. And again, for careers and internships, I couldn't even fit everything on this slide, um, but we have worked over the last few years with Career Center on the U of A campus to compile a list of 
different opportunities, different jobs, uh, different professional practices that students don't often think about automatically, right? And it's no one's fault. It's just, we don't talk about these all the time. So sometimes I know there's the conversation of, oh, what are you gonna do with that major? Well, there's a huge list of things you can do. And all of these have slightly different requirements. They have slightly different career paths, but we really encourage our students to start looking, you know, as early as freshman year um, for things that they might be passionate about following with their degree plan afterwards. You'll see a couple links over there on the left on the career.uark.edu site. That's where you can find this list. It's under what can I do with this major? Also, Handshake is an excellent place for students to find jobs, internships, all sorts of opportunities. We do take students to different conferences with us, and our faculty are very rigorous in their own research. So it's pretty exciting for students to be able to see, you know, someone in the classroom and then to see them present on their research, their practice out in the world as well. So um, we want students to see that and have them be a part of that as well. We do have career fairs, um, visiting artists, like I mentioned before. And then there's also a lot of different firms, agencies and museums and organizations that students can get involved in fairly early on. And another huge part of that is study abroad and different summer opportunities. So just a few of our internships that we offer specifically for School of Arts students would include the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts uh, internship, which is through art history and our program there. We also have a Thrive internship, which you'll see at the bottom image there um, in Helena, Arkansas, which is funded by Thrive and also the graphic design and School of Art programs. And then we also have different workshops all across the United States, whether that's Colorado, North Carolina, New York. We've had students go study abroad in Japan, uh, Ghana, London, Rome, and you can see even had some students doing some design abroad there in Denmark. Um, and one of my favorite students, Mariah Giel, she's in the top left, and that was at an Anderson Ranch workshop where she got to go to study ceramics. We also have students that are interested in sort of something maybe outside the box, right? As artists, we always are thinking a little bit outside. So if you have a self-initiated plan or you found an internship, you found a program that you'd really like to participate in, you can apply for funding specifically through the School of Art for summer travel and summer opportunities. That's in addition to any funding you might get from the study abroad office, um, from the Office of, office of Diversity and Inclusion, or even um, different places around town that may be offering different internship opportunities. Great. And so a little bit about those arts organizations. These are just three that pop to mind, but one of those on the top left um, was a mural project put together in just two weeks um, last summer. That was uh, spawned by two student athletes here at U of A that was, uh, were working with Art Ventures, which is a local gallery and organization here. It was a very grassroots organization. You'll actually see Jody Thompson, who we'll hear from just in a minute, um, up here on the scaffolding working on the mural. And then on the right, you'll see the Momentary, which is a great contemporary sister institution to Crystal Bridges, which is highlighted below. I cannot tell you how much these organizations among the you know, tens of hundreds around the Northwest Arkansas area have really shaped this region to be ripe for cultural conversation, for opportunities for students and artists, and also to have that support network here. Um, I moved here just a few months before Crystal Bridges opened and it has been a game changer. Um, and also all the opportunities that come both from local and more nationally recognized um, spaces has been huge. Um, we are gonna have summer camps. For, so for any of our students here tonight um, or that are watching uh, that are going into 10th grade, 11th grade or 12th grade next year, we are going to have an in-person overnight summer camp that will be June 12th through the 18th. It is free. So as long as you can get to Fayetteville, um, Oh, so sorry that I got too excited there, huh? <laughs> I moved my mouse too much. Um, as long as you can get to Fayetteville, we're going to have you here for the week. All meals are provided. All materials are provided. We will have registration up for that week in January. So be on the lookout for this. And that's some of our amazing students that joined us this last summer. Visit us. You're already here for Spotlight Day, which is amazing. And then we will also have an in-person portfolio and preview day coming up pretty soon. 
And if you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'm available by email, by phone call. Um, also, if you have any questions after the recording gets sent out, would be happy to set up a one-on-one -on -one appointment with anyone and talk through any questions you have. So I'm going to switch over now to our next presenter, which is going to be faculty member Jody Thompson. Um, so he'll be talking a little bit about the foundations program. While I am waiting um, and figuring out that video, I think what we'll do is go ahead and hop over to one of my favorite faculty members, um, Professor Allie Place. Um, and maybe Allie, what we'll do is go ahead and talk about graphic design a bit, and then we will circle back to foundations maybe um, in between um, Lynn's presentation and the current students. Sure, that's awesome. no problem. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Everything look okay? Cool. All right, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Allie Place. I am the program director of graphic design. Um, it's actually my first year as the program director, so I'm super excited to be here and meeting you all. And I'm just gonna share a little bit about our program. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. You can throw them in the chat or we can talk about it at the end. So this is a glimpse of our faculty right now. We've grown significantly over the past couple of years. Um, and we have an amazing group of people uh, working as the faculty. And we always also have adjuncts from the community who are uh, teaching with us as well. So among these faculty, we have a wide range of uh, faculty re research interests. Um, just to give you a little bit of a glimpse, um, Professor Bree McMahon is currently working on a project relating to data visualization around maternal health and birth. Um, and in case you didn't know, in Arkansas, we rank 47th out of 50 <laughs> for maternal health and maternal outcomes and birth outcomes. So that's a really significant issue um, that she's researching here in Arkansas. Uh, Professor Ryan Sloan is uh, currently working on poster designs for social justice issues, and he's presenting poster designs at competitions and galleries across the globe, actually. Um, across Europe and Asia this year. Um, Professor Gabby Hernandez is a, a new faculty this year and she just came to us um, as an endowed associate professor. And part of Gabby's research has involved uh, developing a course on Latinx design history as part of the BIPOC design history lecture series, which is um, open to everyone. It's online. It's through a design studio called Polymode. Um, and so she's uh, bringing light to uh, marginalized histories and design um, for Latinx people. Um, and similar, Dina Benrahim, um, also an endowed assistant professor, she is doing research on Moroccan design and uh, narratives in Moroccan design that have been marginalized and um, unseen in, in history. Um, and she's also working on developing feminist spaces for design research where students can uh, hone their critical design skills and um, have space to work on uh, issues relating to social justice in, in the region. So there's a lot going on on the faculty. And what that means for you is um, you get to take part in their research. You could be their research assistant, or you could be part of one of their projects in class that is relating to their research. Um, or you could work with them on a project um, outside of class. So there's lots of opportunities for students to be involved in faculty research. Um, and they bring those, all of those diverse perspectives into the classroom. So we offer a degree uh, that is a BFA in graphic design. And as Donna said, we have a new building and studios coming soon. Um, we are so, so excited. Um, so that's something to look forward to by the time you get here. Um, we'll have a new building, hopefully it'll be done. <laughs> um, but it'll be, definitely be done by the spring uh, of next year. So that's what we're planning on. Um, and the BFA, um, to apply, so you'll, you'll apply during your foundations year. 
Um, and I'm sure Jody will talk more about that if we get his video working. Um, but once you are enrolled in your foundations year in those classes, you are eligible to apply to, um, to be in the graphic design program. Um, so about halfway through your final semester of foundations is when applications are open um, and then you can, uh, you can apply. So we offer, uh, we require 39 credits in graphic design courses. And um, some of those courses are listed here. It's a wide range of perspectives in design. So you'll do things relating to typography, human-centered design, which is focused on research, identity systems, which is like branding and logos, um, user experience, you'll work on mobile application design. Design for complexity is about systems design. Uh, the technology in context is a really fun class. I teach that sometimes. Um, it's kind of like a, a play space where we explore things like augmented reality and virtual reality and machine learning and artificial intelligence in ways that technology is shaping the way we do design these days. Um, we have a history of graphic design course, um, which is actually not a history class that you would expect. It's um, it's kind of like a studio. You'll do a lot of making actually in the history class. Um, and that's really fun. And you'll do a degree project course uh, in your final semester. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. So we have everything shaped out into an eight semester plan. Um, and all of these courses must be taken in order um, as they are listed. And you can find this eight semester plan in the course catalog on the university's website. And what's nice about this program um, is that when you enroll in the program and you start in your first year, you are part of a cohort and you move with that cohort through the program. So total, you'll be with 30 people approximately in your whole class and they're split into two cohorts. So you'll be in classes of about 15 people, which is really nice and intimate and you'll get a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention from faculty. Um, and you'll have a lot of really close relationships with the people in your classes um, to the point where by the time we all end at the, um, the end of the year for the seniors, we're all just in tears because we've grown so close and we've built such close relationships between us. So um, that's how the, the structure of the program works. But what does a designer do? Um, which is a great question and I couldn't possibly answer it in, in a short period of time, but I'll try. Um, so here's some values that we hold around what we view a designer's role being. Um, so we say that our, uh, our view of design is that you're a problem seeker and you're a problem solver. So designers are very curious and they're looking for ways to approach uh, problems that they can intervene. Um, we communicate visually. Um, we're responsive to context and content. So we talk a lot about how um, the context in which a viewer or a user is uh, encountering your design, how that impacts the way that you make something. Um, we're interdisciplinary. We collaborate across the university with a wide variety of disciplines and programs. Um, so you will definitely be involved with participating in one of those at some point in the program. Um, we're focused on our process and we are focused on iterating, which means we uh, we make changes and we go back to things over and over again. And so we're focused on that iter iterative process um, of always improving something. Uh, we focus on both analog and digital outcomes. So um, you might be hand drawing some letter forms in one class and you might be designing a mobile application in Adobe XD in another class. And those things are present throughout the whole program. Uh, we're also future thinkers and we speculate. So an important part of being a designer is not just solving today's problems, but solving tomorrow's problems. And so we think a lot about what the future conditions are for design and in society and how we can use design to intervene for those future conditions. And lastly, we're client driven and community focused, which means you will do projects that relate to um, something that's like a corporate project, like a client project, um, such as a logo or an identity. Um, but we're also very community focused and we do community outreach projects and service learning, which I'll also talk about. So just a few examples of projects that you might work on in the, um, in the program. Um, this kind of encompasses a few things that I mentioned just now, but 
Also other things like book design, data visualization, package design, icons. Um, so you'll have a chance to do a wide range of visual design projects and also some things that are more strategic design too. So I wanna give you a glimpse of what our senior shows are like. Um, so far we've held um, only a, a small handful of them and one of them was done virtually due to COVID. Um, which is the one you're seeing right here on the screen. So the class of 2020 um, collaborated with the Crystal Bridges Museum of Art and uh, we created a virtual gallery based on an actual gallery that exists in the museum. So what you're seeing does exist in real life, but we got to brand it and fill it with uh, design work in a virtual space. And it was a really fun collaboration um, it made everything about COVID feel much, much more exciting and fun. And the students had a great time. So these are the kinds of collaborations that you might get to take part in. Um, the Tesseract Center on campus is another uh, collaborative space that you might get to interact with. Um, they focus on game design and virtual reality, and we collaborate with them all the time, um, and they helped with this project as well. Here's another example. So this is class of 2021 um, who just graduated last spring um, and we got to hold an in-person show safely and socially distanced. Um, you get to design a brand for the show collaborati collaboratively with your whole class. Um, and your degree project is, um, you know, is the main focus of that, of that class um, at the end of the semester where uh, you get to pick a topic that is close to your heart and is important to you. And you get to dive really deep into that topic over a whole semester and present your research about it and present your design work about it um, at the show. So it's a very exciting, very fun process. Um, and it really makes for just an awesome senior year uh, because you get to focus so much on what you care about most. We have great relationships with a lot of local and regional design firms. Um, these are studios where you'll get to visit to do um, studio visits as part of your professional development course. There are studios where you could do an internship. We have great relationships with um, lots of places to do internships. Um, or they might even be people that are adjunct teaching in your classes. So there's lots of connections to be made in the region um, because it's a very robust design industry in the local area. And as I said, you'll you'll visit some agencies. So um, as part of the professional development course, you'll do a lot of things relating to um, getting your portfolio ready, um, built, creating business cards, um, everything that you need to get ready to join the workforce. And so um, this is just in time for you to prepare ahead of your senior year so that when you're in your senior year, you're fully ready. Uh, to go out there and start applying for jobs. Um, you've got your resume, you've got your business card, you've got your portfolio, everything's ready to go. And visiting agencies and design firms in the area is a big part of that because you'll start building those relationships and getting to know who's in the area. So surface learning is, um, is a format that we do in several of our classes where um, for a whole semester, we partner with someone in the community, an organization or another entity on campus and uh, we work together for a whole semester to address a local issue. So an example that you're seeing here is we spent a semester looking at the issue of food insecurity in Northwest Arkansas. And that involved uh, partnering with a few different organizations. We worked with the um, uh, food pantry on campus uh, to develop design work for them. We worked with um, Tricycle Farms, which is shown in this image here. Um, to have some volunteer time. We worked on the farm and we learned about sustainable farming in the area. And so for a whole semester, you'll get to really dive deep into an actual local issue that's happening in the region. And as part of that uh, type of course, um, starting in the new building, you might be working in the design clinic, which is that bright space that you saw on the ground floor um, with all those glass windows. Um, it's a community facing open space where anyone can come and we can collaborate with community members on design projects of all kinds. Um, so it's gonna be a really exciting space for us in the new building. We have visiting designers every year. Um, and this is in addition to the amazing visiting artists and designers that the school brings in. 
Um, every year in the program, we bring in someone for a lecture, a workshop, a residency, um, something that allows them to interact with students. Um, and we've had some amazing speakers in the past, and we've got some awesome plans for speakers in the future. And as I said, as sometimes they, if they're able to come here in person, they lead workshops, um, which are open to all the students in the program. And it's a chance for you to spend a day with a prominent designer, learn from them and uh, play around, make something, like play around with your classmates, meet other people in the program. So we try to do lots of events like these. Um, we're just figuring out how to do it safely at this time. <laughs> And as I said, you will have the opportunity um, to do internships in the area. Um, I couldn't possibly list all the places that our students have done internships. Um, it's, it's all over the place. It's all over the country. It's all over the region. Um, wide variety of types of positions too, doing branding, doing UX, doing um, exhibition design, doing wayfinding. So there's lots of different things that you could take part in. And Donna mentioned this a little bit too. So we have a relationship with a design agency in Helena, Arkansas. They're called Thrive. And every year we fund a student to do a residency there in the summer. And um, that designer gets to be immersed in the community, work on a community design project and learn how design can be activated in communities to build relationships and create wealth and, and create uh, prosperity for, for the region. So AIGA is the Professional Association for Design, um, and we have a student chapter of AIGA, um, and it's run by students, and all of the events that they hold are open to everyone. Um, so they do events each year, they do things like bingo, movie night, but they also bring in a speaker from the local industry every year um, to have like a really intimate lecture, or it's not a lecture, it's just like a, a talk where you can meet with them um, and if, does, if conferences are ever happening in person again, we send students to the national conference too. Um, so if you're an officer in the chapter uh, of the student group, you, um, you'll get funded to go to the national conference for AIGA. So if you have an interest in any of these things, these are all topics that we are passionate about in the program. They're all things that we will discuss in our classes. Um, typefaces, publications, uh, information design, news, social justice, community, um, then we hope that you'll join us. There's more application information on the art website. Um, you'll also find information about the requirements to be in the program. Um, you'll find an equipment list. Um, that means you'll need a, a MacBook Pro, but you can wait until you get into the program to buy one. Um, and in the meantime, you can follow us on Instagram. Uh, this account is run by a student in the program. So you'll get a student's perspective by following this account and you'll see everything that's going on uh, day to day, week to week. And in the meantime, you can also find us on yorkdesign.com where you can find more about the program and um, what it's like to be in the program. And I will put my email in the chat and anyone is welcome to email me with questions. And that's it for me. Thank you, everyone. Awesome. Thank you so much, Allie. That was fantastic as always. And I'd like to go ahead and move on to Dr. Lynn Jacobs, another fabulous faculty member here at the University of Arkansas School of Art. Um, she'll be talking more about the art history program. Okay. Can everybody hear me and see my screen? Okay, great. So um, I'm very happy to be here to, oh, I should actually go into slideshow mode. How shouldn't I? Yeah, that would be good, wouldn't it? It's not going, oh yeah, wait, well, well <laughs> got too excited myself. So I'm very happy to be here to talk a little bit about art history as a field, as well as the art history program. And, um, you may wonder, what is art history? Have a great slide here to may cause you to wonder what is art history? Uh, obviously in art history, we're studying works of art. We're not making works of art, but we're studying works of art from and objects and, uh, from all, all cultures, time periods, places from the past up to the present. 
And we studied traditional works of art like paintings and photographs, sculpture, and also more recent kinds of media like performance art and installation art. And we also consider conceptual questions about the meaning, value, and interpretation of art today. We also really nowadays art historians get into the wider range of visual culture. We consider images in advertising and graphic design, as well as posters, digital images, images from mass media. And we really think about how art and visual culture intersect with themes like power, politics, religion, money, history, gender, sexuality, identity, race, nationality, and really, we won't, we'll, we won't stop at anything. We really want to consider art from all sorts of angles. And we, as art historians, will share our research through writing and lecturing traditional ways, but also through organizing exhibitions, through collaborating with galleries, museums, libraries, university, and, and a wide range of cultural and historical institutions. So, we are, as you know, located in the Fine Arts Building. This is a really old view of it. Look at the costumes here. <laughs> and, um, but uh, as you know, our building is going to be renovated as soon as the studio faculty um, move out into their new beautiful building. It looks so gorgeous. We, our building is going to be gorgified as well. And we will have a wonderful new spaces as well that we'll share with art education. And we're very excited about that. But this is what it looked like. It's a historic building. It's one of the uh, first examples of an international style building glass box. And it's going to be beautiful. They're still working on the plans, but I've sat in on a lot of the meetings for this building and, I, and the architects are amazing and they're going to do an amazing job with it. So here's our faculty. We presently have six faculty. We plan to, uh, increased by five or six faculty over the next few years. We're going to be hiring this year and probably for the next five or six years. So we'll be close to doubling our faculty, but this is what we are, where we are now. John Blakinger is our program director. He's a specialist in contemporary art, uh, working mostly from the mid 20th century to the present. And he works on things like Andy Warhol's pop art to current debates about politics in the art museum. He does really fascinating work on, on political issues of politics and art. And um, Professor uh, Greenhill is our specialist in American art, especially 19th century American art and popular culture. And she's especially interested in magazines and images used in advertising. Her, her current book project deals with advertising and she's a previous book was on humor in American art. So um, that's her work. There's me in the middle, very photoshopped. I was a little bit bummed about that, but um, but uh, I try to talk them out of that, but they thought they could clean me up a little bit. Um, I work on um, Northern European art um, from the 14th through mid 15th centuries. Also teach a lot of European art, Italian Renaissance art, medieval art. And um, I work on, I'm really interested in artworks that are made up of a lot of pieces. So triptychs, polyptics, anything that falls up and you can open up and you can play with. I'm really interested in, I'm finishing a book on German 15th century painted triptychs. But my next project, which I'm getting really excited about, is about hell. I'm gonna work on images of hell and in particular on Hieronymus Bosch's hell. So it's, it's gonna be my fifth book, maybe my last book. I'm thinking I might go out on the topic of hell, but we'll see. Um, maybe that's not the best topic to go out of. We'll see. At any rate, <laughs> um, uh, Professor Levinson is also uh, in American art, and we will be having a focus in our program on arts of the Americas, broadly speaking, North and South America, because of we want to align a lot of our study with what's going on in Crystal Bridges. So that will be a focus, and that's why we have um, We'll have a good representation in American art. Professor Levinson works on early 20th century modern art in the US, especially avant-garde experimentation in painting. And Professor Guido Ruel in 
keeping up with the theme of arts of the American is, is a specialist in colonial Mexican art and visual culture. She also teaches pre-Columbian art in, um, in um, South America, but she's an expert in maps in what is known as New Spain, that's now Mexico uh, in the 16th century, just fascinating work on how these painted maps were used in legal cases of uh, indigenous people to kind of make land grant claims against Spanish colonialists. And her, her research is fascinating. Professor Sitzma is a study, uh, a specialist in African contemporary art. She also teaches African-American art. Um, and, and African diaspora. She has some really fascinating, she's uh, fam very familiar and does, has done curatorial work with um, contemporary Nigerian art. And she does a lot of work with how um, mythological topics are treated by contemporary African artists. Really fascinating work. Uh, I can tell you, I've said it on, a, on the, a number of classes by a lot of our faculty and Every single one of our faculty members are incredible teachers. They know their students incredibly well. Our classes are quite small, almost most of them. Our surveys are a little bit bigger, but our, our upper division classes are quite small. They're not normally bigger than 25 and their seminars are small. So you really get a lot of individual attention and our faculty know the students really, really well. The BA in art history, you do not need to apply uh, anyone who wants to go into the program is admitted. It's 33 credits in art history. You do start, uh, as Donna said, in survey one and survey two. This sequence takes you through art history from cave painting to up to contemporary art. The first half goes up to 1400, the second from 1400 to the present. I don't know if anyone here is enrolled in AP our history, but if you do get AP credits of a certain level, you can place out of one or more of those. And also you are um, in your junior or senior year, you take the seminar art history, the topics change, but it does involve some study of methodology and training in writing and theory. And then in addition, you take eight additional upper division courses, there are two courses in studio art, as well as completion of a world language through the intermediate two level. Depending on what you've done in high school, you may place up. You don't have to necessarily take all four semesters. So if you place higher up, you just complete through uh, those, uh, the level up to the second semester on the intermediate level. We have a, a minor in art history. And if you end up doing the graphic design program, you actually automatically will get the minor in art history if you want to declare it. And it might not hurt you to have that on your record. So graphic design students, go ahead and declare it. And we do have a lot of students who like to double major in art history in another field, studio art. Uh, with a joint BA and BFA or history or English or anthropology. So we encourage people to do that as well. I just wanted to tell you a little bit about some of our courses uh, on that, just to give you a flavor of some of our courses that we've taught. I certainly have some general period courses and some that you might be familiar with. Uh, we, in addition, by the way, to the people that I just had on the slide, we have um, a professor from the classics department who teaches Greek and Roman archeology. span We also have a professor from architecture who teaches um, Renaissance, Baroque and medieval architecture. So that's an additional thing that we should have had on our slide, but we didn't, but just throw that in here. But we also, we have general courses on a lot of the periods of art. So Greek and Roman, Italian Renaissance, Northern Renaissance, Baroque, and contemporary and 19th and 20th century American art, so forth and so on. But I just wanted to highlight some of the courses that, um, just to let you know the range of, of some of the things we teach. Professor Sitzma teaches, has taught Afrofuturism, African futurism and contemporary art. And this looks, how, looks at how artists, writers, musicians, filmmakers, activists, and other creative thinkers have used Afrofuturism to creatively imagine alternative futures free from the bondage of oppression and to critique the status quo and 
Afrofuturism envisions new utopian worlds through creative and visual imaginings that bridge science fiction, technology, African culture and history, and contemporary politics. That's a course that Professor Sutsma has taught fairly regularly and has been very popular over the years. She's a fantastic teacher. Uh, Professor Blakinger has taught a course that's been um, uh, also very regularly offered. He's taught it recently on the history of new media art, which explores the relationship between art and media and considers how advanced technologies from television to the computer have been used by artists to create works of art. And in this course, he'd consider questions like, what impact does digital culture and the information age have on the arts? And, and how do artists use computers or social media platforms in their work? So that's another uh, very popular course that's taught quite regularly in the contemporary area. Professor Le uh, Levinson recently taught a course called Making and Unmaking Monuments. And it explores how we represent the past in our monuments and what it means in the present and in the future. It's considering these debates we've been having in the country over monuments and how they represent history, including especially the debates over the Confederate monuments. This is the Robert E. Lee Monument in Richmond, Virginia, um, which now in this particular image has been, uh, obviously they've, um, um, it's been um, uh, overlaid with images of Black Lives Matter um, and issues now, it considered issues like the debate on campus that we've been having over the Fulbright statue. So this was um, a re very recent course that she's taught, really interesting uh, a course that she's been offering about the topic of monuments in America. Um, this is Professor Pulido Ruiz, uh, course on pre-Columbian and colonial painted manuscripts that she offers very regularly, really centered on her research interests that examines map making and painted manuscripts in colonial New Spain after the arrival of the European settlers, the Spaniards, uh, which considers how these indigenous uh, native people and um, how they combined in these manuscripts traditional pre-Columbian methods of representation, but also adapted European models of representation when they made these painted masks, which were actually used in the courts to advance their claims to land ownership. And uh, all of these colonial encounters that occurred through these maps. She's recently published a book about this, and it's just really fascinating. I loved her book. Uh, and this is one of the examples of these maps that she has studied in her book on and, um, and she teaches in her course. This is my course on medieval manuscript illumination I'm teaching it right now this very instant, uh, this semester. And actually, um, this is one of the things Professor Polito Ru and I have kind of a, a sort of synchro, uh, a kind of synchronicity between us. Uh, she was working on the on the um, sort of manuscript tradition in in uh, Mexico, in New Spain, in, around the in the 16th century. And there's a sort of overlap by in my interest in medieval manuscripts in a little earlier, but into the similar period in Western Europe. And so, you know, our, some of our students have taken both our courses because of an interest in manuscripts so they can kind of get the Western tradition and a tradition in, um, in South America at the same time. And so uh, in my course, we look at the uh, medieval manuscript tr tradition, and this is a book of ours, we talk about a lot of different issues relating to books of ours, how they were used, how women used them, how we can understand about the devotional practices and how they affected people's daily lives and how they became popular. Um, actually, in our library and special collections, they own some, I own some medieval leaves and a medieval manuscript, as well as a very, a lot, fairly large facsimile collection, which are very, um, 
exact copies of medieval manuscripts. And so next week, our students are going to go over to special collections and get to look at them. And the librarian is going to work with them. They're going to have the opportunity to pick one of the facsimiles and to work with them individually and present them to the class. And, and so it's, it's going to be cl as close as we can get to them actually getting to start opening and studying a medieval manuscript themselves. So I think it's going to be an exciting opportunity for the students. And I think everyone's having a really interesting um, time with them. Um, we've read some articles called Dirty Books. It's actually not what it sounds like. It's about how in handling these books uh, in the Middle Ages, they actually make the pages dirty. They, they, you know, because, and when we see how, which pages get dirty and which pages stay clean, we can see which parts of the books they read and we can understand a little bit more about those people. For example, in one book, the person image has a picture actually of the person who owned the book. It's not uncommon. These are called donor portraits. So we get to see that person was kind of narcissistic. So we learn a little bit about, we learn a lot of that, or we learn that in some pages they read the first part of the book, but they kind of didn't read the last part of the book. And so maybe they got tired or they ran out of energy or they just kept falling asleep every time they read that book. So you can learn all sorts of interesting things that, um, from studying these books, physical aspects of, of them as well as um, things, religious aspects. So that's kind of things we've been studying in this course. So you can see that our courses are really wide ranging and we do a lot of interesting topics. So uh, obviously just like in um, graphic design, you want to know what you can do with a degree in art history. Um, there are a lot of things, there are a lot of things that you do get prepared for um, that beyond just academic study of history. Obviously, one of the key careers is to become a curator in museums, but you can also become a, an educator in a museum so you can lead people through museums and teach the public. Other students work in galleries and um, especially in the contemporary art. We have students who have gone directly with a BA right into working in galleries. And in the contemporary, you do not really need to get advanced degrees or even with a BA and an MA, you can actually go right into, we have a student who went right from his, um, from his BA to getting to a full-time gallery assistant at the David Zwimmer Gallery in New York City which is one of the top galleries in New York City. He just graduated, I think like a year ago and he's doing amazing. Uh, you can also become an archivist working um, in libraries. Some students go and get a library degree after a BA and work in art libraries or an archival. Some, I've had a student who bought a degree in chemistry and art history and, and is now working in art conservation. You can go into publishing or nonprofits, also going on into teaching and writing. Um, and sometimes I've, there are some people who actually, believe it or not, um, there are things like working for the FBI, believe it or not, um, one of the most major crimes is art theft. So some people with art history degrees go into um, kind of um, um, uh, the FBI or other kind of criminal justice sorts of things. And um, they are actually teaching art history now in, um, in medical school and also in police academies because it really increases your powers of observation. So there are uh, uh, very interesting ways to go, to go on with this. We definitely have had a lot of success in our students in terms of also in terms of internships. Uh, we have students right now, many of our students get internships at Crystal Bridges. I have a student right now with an internship at Art Bridges. We do have the Virginia Museum of Fine Art internship summer that we have uh, opened up. And one of our students was so successful at that that she actually currently has a job right now working during the year and she has already been promised a job after she graduates there. We also have opened up a second internship that we had for a student working with our faculty member on exhibition at the Fayetteville Public Library. So we have that. We've also had students have internships at the Dallas Museum of Art uh, in Texas. A student of mine from a while back got an internship at the Cloisters Museum in Medieval Art. 
she went from there subsequently to get a PhD at the Courtauld, and she's actually going to be replacing me as a faculty member when I'm on leave next semester. So we have students, I just got a letter from a student who, um, who did a summer um, museum class at Smith College, who he applied for, and then went on to get a master's at Williams. He's now getting a PhD at Delaware, and he just wrote me to say he's been named associate curator at the America of American Art at the Hood Museum in Dartmouth, which is an extremely good museum for American art. So we've had, I've been here a while, <laughs> and my students write me all the time, former students. I've seen amazing successes from our students who have graduated. We also, we have some other ones recent. Um, one of our students is studying for a library degree at the University of College London. We have somebody working now at the Museum of Native American History in Bentonville. I mentioned our David Zwermer Gallery in New York City. And, um, and then uh, we have somebody who was a minor in art history doing MFA in sculpture at Northwestern University. So we definitely have some of our art history people then go on in studio as well. And um, yeah, another internship. We do have the Society of Art Historians. Um, and Sydney Nichols is the president of it. And that is her contact they've been doing a lot of, um, of, of activities this year planned and Professor Janine Sitzma is the, is, the, uh, is the faculty advisor and they've been promoting a lot of events so you, know, you can certainly contact them and I am more than happy. I will pop my email in the chat as well and I am happy to answer any questions that anybody has and as well if you send Donna anything she can always forward it to me and I'm more than happy to answer any questions. I have been around here for over 30 years. So hopefully I can answer any questions that come up or figure out who would know. So I think that's all I have. Yeah, and John Blakinger is also our program director and she is uh, also happy to answer any questions, but uh, feel free to ask me as well. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Lynn. It's so exciting to hear, you know, where students go after they leave us, right? And so Allie and Lynn sharing these amazing student stories, um, us having some current students here tonight. It's just always, it's full circle. You get to see people actually practicing what they've been studying. And that's a really uh, great thing that we strive for here. I am going to try to play our video one more time for foundations. If that doesn't work, then what I will do is send that link out alongside the recording so that y'all have access to that. And then we're going to hear from two of our amazing current students and peer mentors um, here in just a second. So I'm going to try. All right. So I'm going to talk about foundations and uh, what your first year experience will be when you come to this School of Art. Uh, and just to give a disclaimer, uh, this semester is the first semester that we're back like full time in person uh, since the beginning of COVID. So if there are any photographs in here that show people without masks, I want to assure you that everyone does wear masks. Uh, they do wear masks in the classroom. So uh, this is an image of uh, from one of our courses called Observation Visualization, which is part of the first half of foundations that you're in. Uh, it's class that focuses on the fundamentals of perspectival drawing, <clears throat> excuse me, and drawing from life. Uh, just to give you a brief overview of our program, it's divided into two semesters. Uh, and each of them is nine credits. So it's an intensive nine credits that meets for two days a week for eight hours each. Some of our classes do meet four days a week um, for just four hours. Uh, that's if you're a student who is in band or on a university sports team or cheer squad or some official uh, university capacity. Uh, it gives you a bit of more flexibility so you can still be involved in your classes. Um, <clears throat> so the first part of foundations are uh, the first eight weeks of classes. These are observation and visualization, Ops and Viz for short, it creates a, a looking and visual practice. Um, very much about seeing and per, per perception. 
uh, creative thinking and visual practice. Uh, these are ideations of a seminar course in the second eight weeks. Uh, so at midterm, uh, about eight, yeah, at midterm, it switches over to uh, the two other eight week classes for the semester. And for uh, foundations one, um, those are form and surface and form and space. And those are an approximate to 2D and 3D oriented classes. Um, also, also throughout the semester, um, throughout both semesters that you're here, foundations one and two, we have a writing component, which is the foundations journal. Uh, these are bi-weekly 500 word essays that you write in response to different Thursday evening drill events like artist lectures um, uh, and things like that. So, <clears throat> excuse me, the second semester. Uh, so if you start in the fall semester, uh, foundations two will happen in your spring semester. Um, uh, we start with extended perception and image making. So extended perception is our color focused course, um, color theory and dynamics, uh, and then image making is kind of digitally driven class where you learn how to use digital tools uh, and keep on working with elements and principles of design. Uh, and in the second eight weeks of foundations, you take uh, the class collaborative thinking uh, and time and motion. So collaborative thinking is sort of our capstone class that we teach you how to work uh, in the, as a team, you know, uh, thinking about involving others in your practice. Uh, and then time and motion deals with sound, moving image, uh, images, and a lot of the dynamics of that. <clears throat> so if you want, you can read more specifically about the whole process and the foundations and department. You can go to the School of Art website, which is uh, art.uark.edu. And if you go to the side navigation bar, you can click on current students and then go down to courses. So right now there's no option to view foundations, uh, but we're working on getting that tab there for you to read about the program. Uh, next up, we have our foundations coordinators and there's me, hi. Uh, I am the foundations coordinator and we have uh, a work with Linda Lopez, who is the assistant foundations coordinator. So both Linda and myself teach in various sections as well. Um, and uh, here is our fabulous group of foundations instructors for this semester that we're currently in. Uh, this group, move my little picture here. Um, <clears throat> this group are all not only amazing artists in their own right, but some are faculty from other areas in the School of Art, some are School of Art alumni, uh, and others are current graduate students in the School of Art. So it's worth mentioning here that our guest faculty who teach in foundations are folks from drawing, and experimental, media arts, graphic design, sculpture, painting, printmaking, ceramics, and photography. So, you know, when you take our foundations courses, you often get to work with faculty who teach and or are currently working in these areas of studio art. So you can talk to them about your interests in different programs. Uh, and then we're able to get a, a sense of how to move forward with your foundations uh, schooling here. Uh, and I should also mention here for a moment that our foundations program is really designed to prepare you um, for coursework in any of our three main programs that follow out of foundations. So that's art education, graphic design, and studio art. Um, so here uh, is a shot from our odds and biz class. So we do a lot of perceptually based work in our drawing component. Uh, we do teach intensive skills where we really focus on rigor and you know building that kind of skill set so that you can move forward and thrive in the different areas within the school of art. Um, this next slide is this is uh, from our extended perception class. And, you know, one thing I will say in these slides, you get a sense of the, the spaciousness of our classrooms. I mean, there's really a lot of room to spread out. 
Um, so yeah, this is extended perception dealing with color uh, and composition. Here we have creative thinking. Uh, now this photo was taken a bit earlier this semester, so that's like four weeks ago, um, right? Uh, so this uh, is a bit tame compared to what happens in this class as the semester progresses. Case in point, here is an image of that same classroom uh, taken a cut like yesterday. So there's a lot of different things that happen uh, as the semester progresses, this building gets just a little bit more wacky and, and a lot more fun to walk through as the semester goes on. Um, here is our shot from our image making class. So an image making, uh, like I said, this is where you uh, work a lot with combining analog and digital processes and uh, how to build an image. Um, so, you know, we spend a lot of time in critiques, so talking with your instructor and your fellow students about your work and getting feedback, giving each other feedback, and, you know, there's a one, there's a lot of wonderful things that happen in foundations as you move through it with the same group of students, so, you know, your class of 15 students will move through these courses together, you know, you spend eight hours with each other twice a week and you really begin to develop a strong sense of community that's wonderful uh, and one of the most wonderful things for me as an instructor in foundations is to see groups of students who have gone through the program and eventually be graduating uh, from the university and they're still friends with with people that they met in their first foundations course um, i love this one this was part of extended, one of our extended perception uh, classes in the last couple of semesters. Really beautiful work that comes out here. Uh, yeah, so this is our building, which uh, if you can tell, it's a former Fastenal and Castle rental building. Um, over the next few years, uh, a new foundations building will be built on this site, which is right next door to the new studio art building that's going up right now on the corner of Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard and South Hill. Um, and both of these buildings are just right uphill from the sculpture building. So it's gonna be a really exciting uh, environment to be in over the next few years. Um, and we just, I'll, I'll close, we just love foundations. Um, so this is my contact information, Jody Travis Thompson, uh, and my email, jtt005 at uark.edu. Uh, if you have any questions or you need some follow-up, please don't hesitate to email me. I'd be more than happy to speak. Um, we do have, you notice here's my bicycle right there. So we do have parking, a parking lot in front of our building, um, but it is limited. So it fills up really quickly. So we're we do encourage students to take alternative transport, be that a bike, uh, the, the bus, there's a bus stop across the street uh, on the corner. Um, you know, it's not only good for the environment, it's good for the body and the soul. Uh, so thank y'all so much. And we look forward to having y'all in Foundations at SOAX. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thanks. Oh, good. Okay. I'm so glad that that played. Uh, and that's another thing that we do as artists, right? We got to be quick on our feet and figure out some alternative solutions, right? So I'm glad that that worked out. And I would love to turn it over a bit to our current students. So Catherine, Katie Hogan, uh, and Destiny Lane that are with us. And Lila Bowler is here as well. Um, so Destiny, Lila, and Katie, I would open it up to you all. Um, what are some things that you've experienced within the School of Art that you would tell a prospective student um, is, is maybe one of the best things that has happened to you here while you've been here? Um, I can start. So I think just like the best thing that has happened for me personally within the School of Art is just developing like connections with others and really building out my community because um, I think like especially with my foundations, like my freshman year here, um, I was a little bit more closed off with like actually talking with my peers and even faculty. But as my time here has gone on, like I really just saw how big 
and welcoming the community is. And I knew that I just wanted to be a part of that. And I think like now being in my senior year, building that, like those connections have helped like ground me so much in my time here. Yeah, um, I definitely agree that like one of the biggest benefits that I have had has been like the friendships that I have made and like, especially like connections with both students and professors. I think that the small class sizes and like the structures of the classes make it super easy to like become friends with your, your classmates, whether it be like somebody totally like across the room from you or like right next to you in the same like place. Um, professors are super easy to talk to. They're like very like willing to discuss your ideas, help you out with any issues that you may be having, whether it be like art related or like, you know, just starting out college related. Um, and foundations was like super, I guess, enriching to me because I came from like a very small school with a small art program. And it really helped me feel like I could catch up to those students who had like more opportunities to take like art classes during the summer or like visit other colleges and stuff. So I think that overall, just like the experience that you get from the School of Art is catered to you and helps you like kind of gain these traits and connections that can help you both in your later like art, like schooling, but also like in your career and in your life. So yeah. I'll say like mine's not probably as deep as like making connections and friends and everything, but I will say this, and I feel like this should be my response because I recently like last week walked out of one of my studio classes and I literally said this is why I love going to the school was because I've been, especially this semester and like previous semesters, I've been in my upper level classes now. Uh, more connect connected with the momentary and crystal bridges like my classes have. Um, been able to make class time to go out there and like we uh, have like private tours planned and like that's been part of our co coursework and it's just been super awesome because sometimes even though you want to go out there and see the museums they are you know 30 minutes so like kind of ma making that time is a little hard so like I don't know I just love all of those those connections because we've been able to talk with people at Crystal Bridges um, and some of my classes and I just I like those kind of interactions that I wouldn't normally have as so yeah I was also going to add to um like with I know specifically with the design program and I know with the photography and I'm not sure with like the other um degree paths but they do have like professional development which like helps like have that stepping stone for when we do graduate and like how how do we set up a website? How do we brand ourselves? How um, how do I build my portfolio and resume? And I think what's also really nice about building those like one on one connections with professors, like even if you take a course, but they would still be willing to talk to you one on one if you had like other concerns for like how like what does that transition look like once I get out of school and into the job field. Awesome. And Lila, I wanted to ask you too, you're an honor student. Uh, so how has that experience been, you know, in sort of combining that with your art plan? Uh, yeah, definitely being an art honor student is a very unique experience. If you're an honor student in like, say, a STEM field or like business, you'll have a pretty like, I guess, strict idea of what you're supposed to do. Not so much in terms of your subject or like, how you go about it, but more so you kind of have like an outline for how you're supposed to structure your thesis, um, what your thesis kind of situation is going to be in terms of like turning in uh, your proposal and all that kind of stuff. But as an art student, you will also be kind of in charge of putting together like your own body of work and even doing like an exhibit at the end of your schooling. So that is a very unique experience for art students through the honors program that you wouldn't have as like an honor student in another field, which I find really interesting. I've definitely liked the like freedom of kind of thinking about like the, the honors thesis, not so much as like, you know, I don't know, research in the traditional sense of like looking stuff off online or in books and kind of like thinking of ideas in that way, but also thinking about it in terms of like art making 
and visual experience and art history and all these things that like envelop my kind of like series of interests throughout the years. So I've not that uh, far into actually like structuring things. I have uh, a thesis advisor already kind of like figured out, but nothing too in depth with that. I'm kind of like, I'm just in my first semester of junior year. So I'm kind of just starting out developing my committee and my idea for proposals. But um, yeah, you can do basically anything you want for your research topic. And I, I will say, I'm pretty sure that um, BFA studio art students also do like an end of the year exhibit. So like, you don't have to be in honors, I think, to do like exhibits of any sort, but you definitely have this kind of more structured and connected way of doing that because you're having to defend like this whole thesis based on research and like have a research mentor within the School of Art, which I think is like, especially enriching whenever you're kind of being able to connect to these professors. And usually when you're choosing a professor to be your uh, faculty thesis advisor, you're going to end up choosing somebody who you've probably taken a few classes from or somebody who their own research and their own work kind of connects to what you want to work on. And I think like having people within the School of Art or even like outside of the School of Art, if you're going to be doing like a subject for a thesis that like connects with something else, like say you want to think about uh, like psychology and art, you can like go to a psychology professor to discuss like your kind of ideas on research and what they may be researching. Um, but that's just kind of like a better opportunity to kind of like develop your own kind of like sensibilities and really get a bigger idea of making independent artwork. Yeah, no, that's great. Awesome. Anna, can I quickly talk about honors and design? I meant absolutely. To, and I think I forgot. Um, so we have several honors students in design every year and we've actually structured the honors path in design to be woven in with your existing courses. So your honors thesis in design is actually made up a large part based on um, your degree project course. So there's a lot of things that you'll do for your thesis that you're already gonna be doing for degree project and you kind of get to double dip a little bit. So it's woven into our program in a way that makes sense and hopefully alleviates some, some burden for honors students. Um, and we've got a pretty smooth pathway for students to, to do that. Um, so we've had a couple of students do it each year so far, and it's worked out great. And um, I love working with honors students. I love being a part of their thesis committees and chairing their committees. Um, so we highly encourage that in the program. And we've always tried to make it as easy as possible for students to combine all of that with their design degree. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, along those lines, you know, you're thinking about, um, uh, finishing your degree, right? Or maybe you're applying for things. And so to my three students here, when you're thinking about writing samples, portfolios, what were some of the things that you were maybe nervous about as an incoming student putting together something like that to, you know, apply for different scholarships, to apply for programs? And what recommendations or advice would you give for some prospective students that are with us here or in the recording um, as they start to think about that for School of Art scholarships and different opportunities? Um, I feel like the biggest, like the biggest fear for me when I was putting my portfolio together was like wondering if my work was good enough. And I think like even if you show work that you don't necessarily feel is like your strongest, but I think like for me, the biggest focus was explaining the process behind the work. And because with all of the applications where you're submitting a portfolio for um, like the scholarships or even the applications um, to the program, like they ask you to give like a little description with your project. And that's the biggest focus that I never really um, thought much about was like, talking about that process behind it because that in turn like just shows how you're thinking as an artist and your problem solving and even like showing work like that maybe you made your freshman year but like that process with it was so like 
built out and it can show your growth as an artist because I think a lot of people do get scared when applying to um, like scholarships or schools, not like wanting to highlight how much they have grown like with their art skills. And I think like showing that growth is so important. Yeah, um, I think one of my biggest worries whenever I was applying for scholarships and stuff was kind of figuring out what work was the right work to show. And like with me, I mostly was just kind of thinking like, okay, stuff from my AP studio art portfolio can work for that. Or like anything that I had made like in recent years from high school might work. But I actually like whenever I was doing my scholarship application last year, I was looking at like all of the applications that I did in the past. And like the first one, it was almost like embarrassing because I didn't even know how to like defend my artwork or like write about it. So I didn't put anything in the description other than just like materials and stuff like that, right? And then like the next year I actually put in like some effort for that. And then this year I actually was able to like know how to talk about my artwork and not be afraid of like what I'm putting in there in terms of like completeness and stuff like that. Like there were a lot of in progress kind of shots or some very like gestural warm up sketches and things of that sort that I put in there. And I think that like when you're putting together your portfolio, it's good to be able to not only like just kind of talk about like why you're doing what you're doing and like what your process is for what you're doing, but also show that your your work isn't just like hey, yeah, this complete piece, you're also talking about like, yeah, there's this kind of like thing that I do with like warm ups and stuff. And I like doing gestural work, or I uh, put together like this thing, and it wasn't complete. But I think that this like, aspect of incompleteness is interesting, because blank, you know, so I, I definitely think that those are very important to depicting you as an artist, probably even more so than just like totally complete works without any description. So yeah. Yeah, I think that's really great advice. And I wanna thank our current students for joining us. They're all peer mentors. Um, so we do have a wonderful group of peer mentors that are current students across all of the disciplines within the School of Art uh, that are available for all students, including foundations, including first year art history majors, everybody um, that comes through these doors can find current folks to, to reach out to and just chat with and get to know. So we're really proud of them. And I know that we are at time uh, just about but I did want to open up the floor for any questions from prospective students that are joining us tonight, family members and guests. Um, does anyone have a question that they would like to, to pose to the group? And I know it's also been a lot of information <laughs> in a short period. Okay. Well, what I will do is we will go ahead and call our time there. However, I'm gonna stick around for a bit. And so if people do have questions and they feel more comfortable you know, talking privately, I'm happy to do that. Um, I'm gonna pop my email again into the chat. Oh, thank you, Destiny. Yeah, thank you. thanks to all of our presenters, our amazing faculty, our amazing current students for joining us and Jody Thompson from afar uh, via Zoom. We're so proud of, of everything that the School of Art is um, experiencing right now. And that is only made possible by the faculty, staff and students that are here. So we are very excited about that. Oh, it looks like we do have an art history question, Lynn, um, in the chat there from one of our guests. Yes. Ah, this, um, the question is whether there'll be any Asian art history classes. We actually have this on our plan hires. We do have a faculty member on staff now, uh, Omi Lee, who has taught that in the past currently, and she's a specialist in Asian art. Unfortunately, right now she's covering some other classes or art lecture, so she's unable to cover that. I don't know if we'll be able to have her teach that, but we do plan to hire 
in that, it's definitely a priority for us. And so we do hope to be offering, we have offered it and we do hope to offer it to have a full-time faculty member in that in the near future. But I am definitely going to pass on that interest to our program director to make sure that he knows that we have interest in that and that we make sure this is a high priority because it's definitely on a, our planned hiring plan. Very good question. I've been, I've been arguing that we should hire someone very soon in that. And we and I'd like to have that offered regularly, although we have definitely offered it. And I like to make sure we get that more into our higher into our offerings very soon. Thank you so much, Lynn. Um, we've had another question about current uh, University of Arkansas freshman student, maybe changing course next year and coming in as a sophomore new student. That is definitely a thing. Uh, I was in advising for several years before this position, and it, I would be happy to talk with you to see, you know, which courses would be the right fits, um, which area would be the right fit. And it's definitely possible. You know, that's one of the beauties of being at a large institution like the University of Arkansas is you might start off in something um, and then find your path into a different area. So we definitely have students that start at all stages of their majors. And also we can still work in scholarship opportunities, study abroad opportunities, and making sure that you're making good progress on your degree plan too. So I will reach out to you um, individually as well. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you all so much again. Fantastic questions. Thank you all for joining us and taking time out of your evening to chat with us. If anyone does have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to us. We would be happy to chat with you. And I'll give us one more round of applause for our amazing faculty and students that are here tonight too. And we hope you all are feeling safe, having a great semester and hope you have a great upcoming weekend. Thanks so much.